And because it's a 3v3, we can't really use Capture Age. Ooh, this is going to be interesting, guys. Let me just uh, redo the audio settings ever so slightly. Alrighty. We've got ourselves another game on Tar Desert. Oh my goodness. You know what we don't have enough of? Tar Desert. But honestly, I think this is going to be really interesting for team games. Is this like the T-West map pack that's only Baltic? Get it twice in a row? Indeed. Anyway. Series is now all tied up. Masters of Tar Desert. Uh, vodka gonna be the purple Chinese on the right flank for ROR. Kamigawa the yellow Burgundians. In the pocket. <laughs> yeah, I made it in paint. Game 5 Tar Desert's also <laughs> fixed. <laughs> oh my god. Masters of Tar Desert confirmed. Uh, and then Ganji will be the red Ethiopians on the left flank. Now, remember, guys, the lower player... Like, okay, so you can pick exactly where you want your players. The lower player number is always going to be the one that's closest to the water on this map. That's why we have player one and player two uh, on the water side flank, whereas we have the uh, cyan and purple uh, in the pocket. Or, you know, the far away flank, rather. They are pay playing on the current patch indeed. Anyway, Licks will be the blue Britons here on the water side flank for WWP. Yo will be the green Lithuanians in the pocket. And Vivi will be the Cyan Vikings on the right flank. Since we're not familiar with it, did you just tune in, Wooden Rock? Because uh, this is already the, th what, the third game I've cast on this <laughs> today on this map. But this is the first 3v3 we're seeing on it. And this is why I, it was one of my favorite maps uh, when I did the map pool judging contest thing. Okay, so Yo is going with the early dock. But yeah, it's it's very open. We've seen you know very aggressive play on it in the 1v1s. But when you're looking at the, the team games, you start very close to your allies. So it... You know, on the one hand, it's a lot easier to make aggression happen, but on the other hand, it is in some ways much harder. Let's see how many people go for water. Ganji going to be going for some fishing ships, but not Kamigawa. Uh, has he gotten double Bidax yet? Remember, this is current Burgundians. Yeah, he already has Bidax. Yes. Remember that Burgundians now get discounted gillnets in Feudal Age. Ah, oh, please, Falter. Smell, man. Cap. So yeah, we have a flank player going for water and then a pocket player, interestingly. Yeah, already some team walls coming in. Makes plenty of sense to me. So let's compare sieves, because we actually have... Do we have six unique sieves? Nice! Hell yeah! That's what I like to see. Okay, so Vikings versus Chinese. I do think it's probably just still Chinese favored. Like... Can you really say Viking Eco is just so much better than Chinese Eco? You can probably say it's a little bit better. Like, just just a little bit, though. And then the Chinese obviously have the, uh, the much more fleshed-out tech tree, but Vikings will be providing their team bonus. I mean, Viking team bonus is super strong in this instance, and the Chinese team bonus is, like, literally always strong, so... They're, it's both good, right? Burgundians versus Lithuanians. I mean, we're in uncharted waters right now because we've seen 
Actually, this is the very first team game I've seen on this patch with uh, New Burgundians. I've seen 1v1s with the, the New Burgundians, but not any team games. And it's, theoretically, this is where, you know, Burgundians should be shining. You know, like, here's Coustier. No, that didn't really work. Charted those waters, yeah. Yep, Relic Bonus is certainly something to keep in mind. And then finally, Ethiopians versus Britons. Classic flank matchup. Favor Britons by a little bit, but not by too much. And that's... That is an ugly gold for Lix. Ew. Ew. Oh yeah, nicely done for Jordan there. Anyway, everyone is on up to Feudal Age. Look at this. Bosol coming in right away for Kamigawa. Showing the Lithuanians who's the real master of the bow saw. Scout's just running around. Corgi scratching at the door. Oh, to have a corgi. To have the smallest of the herding breeds. You bet it's the third game on this map. Anyway, scout play here from the pocket. Second stable for yo. Dang, double stable scouts. And, whoa, look at this guy's triple galley from Ganji. They're really focusing on water control. Meanwhile, Lix is just going archers. Vivi just going archers. And there really isn't much, uh, you know, importance being placed on water at all by WWP. I mean, you know, Got that early fishing ship boost, but other than that, nothing really too crazy as far as that's concerned. But let's see if they can hold on, uh, well, on the land. How's the Ethiopian Navy? Surprisingly decent. They have shipwright and fully upgraded um, galleons. And I think they have dry dock too. Who won the 1v1s? Uh, ROR did. 2-1. to one. Oh, and look at this. The triple fishing ship queued up behind this. I like it. Like, the funny thing is, although we're seeing this map, like, a ton today, I, I do think it's a really good map. Since uh, the admins, or at least some of the admins are in the chat, uh, who designed this map? I don't remember. Also, it's kind of funny watching, like, going from Capture Age to the regular Spectator Client, just because it's uh, so much smoother, like, it's much higher frame rate. But howdy ho, my bro. We've got a lot of scout cavalry here for Mr. Yo. Oop. Something happened. Okay, I guess we're good. Uh, contingency walls are coming in, but there is still a hole here. Okay, it has been plugged up, but... That is a lot of scout cavalry. Vodka's coming in with his own reinforcements. Uh, where are Vivi's archers, actually? They're actually just kind of chilling at home. Meanwhile, very decisive win on water, obviously, for Ganji. And remember, you can take your ships and sail over here. Don't let the uh, the sand dunes fool you. You can harass these wood lines, no problemo. Defensive watchtower now here for Ganji. And they are looking really, really good. Kanji actually has 40 villagers thanks to, you know, adding in these extra fishing ships. Eight fishing ships for our Ethiopian player. But yeah, if I recall if I recall correctly, Ethiopians only miss um, Elite Cannon Galleon, uh, Fast Fire Ship, and Heavy Demo. So they only have, you know, Galleons as an Imperial Age naval option, but they do have those fully upgraded. Anyway, big, big fight right here. 
Scout numbers are actually now quite high here for Kamigawa, but of course this is the weakness of Burgundians. You don't have bloodlines. So Yo is just going to have that advantage over his opponent. Also, we have to remember Britain team bonus insanely strong. And now that stable's being punched down by those scout cavalry. Defensive Watchtower might be enough to drive away the Chinese armies for the time being. But look at this. Lix is up on his way to Castle Age, selling stone, I think. Yeah, it doesn't have any towers or anything. Look at this from Mr. Yo. Outside the walls, making a house wall. <laughs> That's pretty funny looking. You don't normally see that. Anyway, now I'm going to be bouncing over to the base here of Vodka. Like I said, this is a really interesting dynamic on this map where you have both the very aggressive, you know, open, close to each other aspect to it, but it's also you're very close to your teammates. No, no, no. <laughs> Third range here for Vodka. Other players now up on their way to Castle Age. Everyone except for uh, Ganji and Yo. Ganji because he was um, focusing so much on water and was also under a lot of threat, and Yo because he's been making a bajillion scouts. You know, give or take. How close is Yo, actually? Ooh, ooh, oh, okay. I was like, oh my god, he has no resources. He's never getting up to Castle Age, and then I just like, oh, okay. Well, Lix now in Castle Age, selling that stone, just trying to get as fast an uptime as possible. Triple ranges with Britons, he is not messing around, man. Oh, I realized why something could be going wrong. Capture Age, it's still running. Good old CA memory leak. Anyway, another defensive tower is coming in. But, I mean, this is a lot of pressure. University coming in right away here for Vodka, and the tower will help. Ooh, Lick's committing here. I'm not the biggest fan of this. But funneling the scouts into a choke point is nice, potentially... Also, I'm pretty sure he has ballistics. Yeah. And just, you know, head on, apply directly to the forehead. Second TC is coming in here for Vivi. Obviously, Vikings, super good eco. Whereas I don't think we're seeing that uh, just quite yet for our uh, primarily Italian team. <laughs> Wait, does, does Red not realize that he can sail up here? Because that would be really bad for Ganji if he just didn't know that you can sail over here. I mean, it's not very intuitive, right? But you, you can do it. And a pause, just to, you know, build dramatic tension. Or something. Hi. Looks like Yo is getting ready to build another town center. Third one now coming in here for Vivi. Is Lix and Tilt this game? Maybe. They're certainly wanting to be very aggressive. Where's Ganji's army? Ganji's army is mostly navy. I mean, he has some crossbowmen. He has got triple ranges, but... Uh... Ah, here it is. And you know, Arwar is holding... But more units flooding forward. So, the issue I have right now with ROR is that, okay, they're having a much more defensive approach, but they're not actually getting ahead economically. They're all on one TC. Now, the fishing eco is really helping out Ganji. He's even building uh, additional docks uh, to make sure he's as efficient as possible. But 
none of his teammates are really in that great a spot. Like, Anji 51 villagers, then it's 43, 41. Whereas everybody is on either the same or higher villager counts for WWP. So it's really just like they're hammering in their opponents right now. And we're looking at... Okay, what? 39 crossbowmen right now for Vivi? He only has 5 kills to 1 death. He hasn't really been doing much of the fighting. He's been allowing his teammate to do most of the fighting and dying. Oh, but here's Cavalier in. Is this going to be enough to deal with the Lithuanians? Uh, Yo doesn't have relics yet. Or if he does, he only has one. But that archer number from Vivi is still standing quite strong. But the Cavalier are still there. Looking like they're trying to cut off these reinforcements. Or retreating, rather. Box formation! With the box formation, you can protect the weak unit, such as a monk. Oh, this is really good, actually. Look at this. Taking a very decisive score lead right now is ROR. Yeah, very, very good fight. Obviously, they had to win it. They were being pressured quite heavily. But they took the fight exactly when they needed to. It's that timing, that power spike you get with uh, Burgundians. Uh, yes, this is technically a best of five. And for all intents and purposes, um, <laughs> it uh, it is at this point. We're, it's only 3v3s from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> Our masters of Tar Desert. <laughs> more and more range is coming in here from Lix, but, I mean, his eco can't be that great. In fact, it's bad. Two TCs for him. Yo is also on two. And, okay, yeah, he has one relic, but that's it. Vivi, meanwhile, is on three, so his eco is very strong. But he's still quite far away from the Imperial Age. Kamigawa chasing down the stray crossbowmen of Lix. You came to the wrong part of town. Who decides the map? Uh, it's pretty complicated. Sometimes it's random, sometimes it's picked. And oh, look at this. Ganji's going to be the first player to click up to the Imperial Age. I mean, it makes sense, right? He's had all of that fishing eco. He's just on the 1TC, but he's got what? 39 military? Clicking up to Imperial Age, going to have that Ethiopian Arbalest punch. Yeah, no, like, legit... I feel tempted to just... Because uh, I was messaging Ganji uh, for the, the lobbies. And I, I really feel tempted to just message him after the game saying, You can sail up the shallows. <laughs> yeah, Lix's eco. Not really all that great right now. Big fight though. Yo, just with the one relic still. The uh, Burgundian Cavalier are going to be better, but it seems like maybe the crossbow numbers are just good enough here for WWP. But then reinforcements are coming in here from Vodka. Oh man, they're pushing. <laughs> Some micro-nerding there from Ganji. And WWP, they're on the back foot. Eighty-six percent to Imperial Age, and as both teams disengage, it's, wait a minute. Oh, it's just a Cavalier. Yeah, Yo's really gonna try and need to try and get some more relics, but the relics on this map are all situated somewhere in the between the two teams. You don't really have any relics that are in the back of your base. And then with all of these custom maps, it's not like the uh, DE versions of maps where like 3v3s you have like, what, like six to seven relics or something like that? No, you just get five. Like every other map in the history of AoE 2. Rip that monk. We hardly knew ye. Anyway, the faster working uh, ranges from the Britain team bonus is certainly going to be coming in clutch in this set. <gasps> Does he realize? 
Oh, maybe it's just on patrol. Castle now coming in here from Vivi. He just hit Imperial Age. But Vodka's hot on his heels. And we're going to be looking at, you know, two players in Imperial Age to the one. Here's Ganji! Oh, who even needs Saracens? Who needs Obsidian Arrows? Oh, that one last night was able to be built. Oh, okay, Bracer is in, but not quite Arbalest. Now we even have Chemistry in for a red player. Yo has iron casting, but now we're looking at the night dance. Oh no, it's two players making Arbalest versus only the one. Uh-oh. Looks like ROR's making a lot of headway. Like, the knights just really don't do anything at this point. They're going to need to fall back to the castle of Vivi here, but they're already at such a large military disadvantage. Geo's on four army. How far away is Lix from clicking up? He's not that close. Oh, no. Now Arb's even streaming into his base. They do see this castle here, so they're going to need to uh, retool their attack a little bit. One thing I'm not the biggest fan of is the lack of armor upgrades for Ganji. It means that even though he's Ethiopian, he's not doing as well as he possibly could be in a straight-up fight. Okay, defensive castle now coming in on that side for Yo, but this just leaves the center exposed. And they're trying to hold, man. Yo still very far from Imperial Age. I assume that Kamigawa... No, Kamigawa's actually still nowhere near to clicking up. No, it's a best of five. Whoever wins this will go to match point, but they won't actually win. Unfortunately, you cannot build allied buildings. That's not how this game works. <laughs> oh man, all these arbs from Vodka coming in. Arbs streaming in here from Vivi, but it's tough. Plus four defense in though, and honestly, that's a really big deal. None of the players on uh, ROR have that upgrade. And in these big archer shootouts, it matters a lot. Uh, ROR won the uh, 1v1 set 2 to 1. Look at this, guys. Like, Vivi's kind of holding right now. A lot of these archers from Vodka are going to die. Guys, get your archer armor upgrades. This is like the PSA, courtesy of uh, Vivi. And I'm not saying that. WWP is in a great spot right now. But, you know, Lix is on the way to Imp. They held. They're not dead. This game ain't over. Now Vivi looking to try and make something happen on the other side. Uh, Yo, close to clicking up. Kamigawa not too far away either. But will this give Yo the opportunity to take some more relics? Because obviously that would be super helpful for them. But yeah, Vivi obviously, like, playing very, very well this game. Vaga well, trying to secure uh, that wood over there. Is trade? Uh, no. Well, okay. It's just now getting set up here for uh, WWP. Not at all yet for ROR. Okay, finally Ganji's going to have all those armor upgrades, and so does Vodka. But now Lix is an imp. Oh, Kamigawa's still in Castle Age. Yo's around a third of the way up. And he's got two relics now. I mean, and once 
like Paladin comes in for Yo, like Burgundians just can't compete at all. Yes. Galleons are very much able to range the trade. It means that water control actually has value in late game, which I really like. Imp's not in just yet. VB slinging some food to Mr. Yo. Not too sure why. Making light cav. Uh oh, that's not really what you want to be doing. We're looking at 58 crossbowmen versus a little bit more than 58. Deleting the archery range is licks. But I mean, they need the fight. And look at this, Kamigawa missing in those Cavalier numbers. When you're focusing so much on, like, just making as many Cavalry units as possible in mid-game, it really hurts your eco. Ugh. High ground, though, is in favor of ROR at this point. And they now have the, uh, you know, they have all their upgrades, so they win the straight-up fight, especially with Ethiopians. But also, look at this from WWP. They are just always so diligent about getting trade set up as early as possible. Nada for ROR. The scores could be just about to switch. It's over, WWP. How many ranges is that? Seven ranges? Feels good, man. Anyway... Kamigawa is still about to hit Imperial Age, and remember that he can research the Paladin upgrade instantly. Lick's trying to take back water. Looks like a little bit of a counterattack was cleaned up. This is a good game, guys. But yeah, now we're going to see another fight for water, interestingly. Oh, but you do not want to take that fight, Lix. With a box formation, you can protect the weak unit, such as a monk. Uh, Yo is still making mostly light cav. That's not great. He has gold, too. Why is he... <laughs> Why is he even cavalier? This makes no sense to me. He's getting hussar. What? What? Well, now Vivi's going to tr be trying to push over here. And Yo is at least raiding with these like calves, so it's not like he isn't doing anything. Investing in a trade, but he had the resources. <laughs> you know, it's like 300 gold, right? Whereas Paladin Upgrade is coming in here for Kamigawa. And right now, guys, look at this. Vivi chilling at 200 po- No, no, sorry, that's Ganji, my bad. Ganji chilling at 200 population. Vivi not quite there yet. Kamigawa's getting close too, but Vodka down to only 97. And the thing is, Ganji's kind of having to split duty between making a ton of army and then trying to retake water right now. Or re-retake water, I suppose. And Yo's got plus six attack right now in his cavalry. Plus seven even. Do it yourself, Farimba. Like, just chilling at home. And, like, look at all these arbalests from Ganji. As a full control group of 60 of them right here. But just not doing anything with them right now. Oh, look at all these markets, man. And howdy-ho the trade. That's a lot of paladins, though. Several villagers going to be picked off. And Vodka's just really not doing so well. Uh, VV slinging resources to Yo, probably, so he can get Paladins. And indeed, he has that upgrade coming in right now. Uh, the, the walls are a little strange. You know, you have fortified wall, but you have a ton of holes in it. And the score lead keeps on switching back and forth. But just, Ganji's not able to make that push happen, man. But having war galleys in the enemy trade is, is certainly not anything to complain about. And Vivi's army here is eventually going to die. You know, he's getting as much value as he can, but it is all going to die eventually. The big thing is just having those reinforcements come in, even adding in some Mr. Pokey Pokes. Huh? 
Voodoo boot. Hussars from Kamigawa. Uh, he still doesn't have Blast Furnace, by the way. Another very important upgrade to have. But honestly, Vivi's just been the, the star of this game. Just in general. Did such a good job on his side. And just having that competitive Imperial Age timing while also having a stronger eco really did a ton just to keep WWP alive. Trebbing now going to be beginning. Uh, Hussars actually may be able to run in and snipe, but the pikemen aren't really in the greatest of position. Or they could run past it. That's also a possibility, I suppose. Water could deny... The, the problem right now is that nobody wants to invest in water because they would just die on land instantly. Transport ships for licks! Oh my goodness, I love it! I love it! He still has some flair. But we got 14 plus 7 attack on these paladins that are, you know, otherwise fully upgraded. Whereas Burgundians, of course, not even uh, bloodlines. Capram is now coming in. And WWP are looking pretty good, although the, uh, the other team still has the score lead, ROR. Oh, look at this uh, new wave of galleons. You're know, trying to build another defensive castle. And I guess ROR are trying to push right now. Did lose that castle. Doesn't really help the matter. Looks like a little bit of a paladin raid is being attempted, but likely just going to be cleaned up instantly. And again, not having Blast Furnace versus Bloodlines and plus seven. Oh man, that is... That is a bit of a difference, to say the least. I guess that's nice. Is the trade dying? Uh, it's not love and life right now, that's for sure. However, a bunch of fast fire ships should be enough to at least deny it. Deny the denial long enough. Get destroyed on land. If the units are garrisoned inside the transport ship when it dies, it, those units die as well. No matter if the units could be unloaded, if possible. But if you do not unload them yourself, they are going to just die. Anyway, ROR is trying to make this happen, but I mean, look at this. Now we have the full eight uh, additional attack. Yeah, four relics here for Yo. We're looking at 22 base attack on the Paladins versus, what, 16, I think? Yeah, and those are only if they're Paladins. Right now it's mostly Hussars for Kamigawa. With the early Paladin spike can prove costly. Well, it wasn't even really an early Paladin spike because Kamigawa was so late to the Imperial Age because he was investing so much in the mid-game on the, uh, the heavy cavalry. They just weren't quite able to close it. Very slowly are these guys trying to... Uh... Get that castle built. How those Arbalas get there? What? Castle goes down here for vodka, and he's just been falling behind uh, by so much. To kill the Juggernaut? Yeah, we, we beat that uh, that spec op scenario. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that, Elvenar. Yeah, and I mean, Kamigawa is just making Hussars right now, and he's just now getting Blast Furnace, man. Granted, these are mostly skirmishers against Ethiopian Arbs, but still. The, uh, the, the difference in value, I think, is a little bit huge, to say the least. Yeah, it was the T-West Call of Duty stream. Yeah, you can see, like, the Galleons are going to die eventually. And the castle's now up. Looks like Arwar have started trade, but I mean, I feel like it's not going to be very possible to stop this push here from WWP. Well, I say that. 
I mean, it is a lot of Hussars, for sure. And those are Halbs as well. Chieftain's coming in for the Pikemen. Oh, Stuart, I have a, I have a video on that. Yeah, for now, Elix is continuing to play with WWP. I don't know if he's going to sign up for additional tournaments or not, but he's going to at least finish this one out. PV continuing to push forward here. Both he and Ganji are still hovering around Max Pop. Uh, Kamigawa is actually closer to Max Pop than is Yo, but that's also a lot of uh, villagers. Heated shot. Yo getting treadmill crane and heated shot. He even has guard tower, man. What happened with Lix? Uh, Lix is ostensibly retiring. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're just not stopping Lithuanian Paladins at this point. Some more stables coming into the south here for Mr. Yo. Now it's going to be a matter of controlling wood lines as well as, much, as well as anything else. Halbs are like... Wait, we're supposed to counter paladins! What is this random watchtower? Ooh, even Onager in here for Vivi. <laughs> He's a Russian. He's making guard towers. <laughs> I mean, I suppose Vikings do have fully upgraded guard towers. They don't have the keep upgrade, but they have everything else, including arrow slits and architecture. Uh, Yost Castle does stand for the time being. Hitting hill forts. Oh man, so many more paladins flooding forward. Yeah, now Yo's chilling at max pop. <laughs> now we have late game Yo.exe. But honestly, like I said, Vivi's still the MVP of this game in my eyes. He just has a really bad late game sieve. <laughs> kind of hard to close it out. The guard towers are pretty hilarious, though. Look at this, yo. 12 paladins at a time. <laughs> oh my god. 14 plus 8 paladin production times 12 sounds just... It just sounds like a nightmare. And there's the GG called, indeed. Really, really good game, though. Arawar almost had it. They had two players in Imperial Age to one. They had the larger army. They had the better engagements, but, you know, the castle bought some time. And then Yo was able to get another castle up, and it's just like they were just barely able to hang in there. They had just enough buildings in the way. Also, Arawar never, never sailed up over here, man. And they will be putting themselves to match point. Yeah, that did feel a bit weird, but... Eh. Yo, obviously with the best KD, but... Vivi, still really sick play from him. 